Introducing to you first the challenger on my left, fighting out of the blue corner. Ladies and gentlemen, he is proudly representing his new home and wears the colors of the United States flag, red, white, and blue. Fighting out of West Palm Beach, Florida, by way of Kampala in Uganda, he weighed in at a trim and ready 152 pounds. His record stands at 19 wins, one loss, one draw with one no decision. He has 13 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, he has ranked the IBF number one junior middleweight contender, introducing Kasim, the dream. the ring is the defending world champion on my right fighting out of the red corner wearing blue trunks with black trim he is fighting out of it representing denver colorado he also weighed in at a ready 152 and one half pounds his record stands at 38 wins nine losses one draw with 20 wins coming by way of knockout here is the former wbo junior middleweight champion and the current ibf junior middleweight champion of the world introducing verno phillips 12 rounds of boxing once again ladies and gentlemen a referee in charge joe cortez now to give instructions Okay. All right, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I expect a good, clean fight. You guys, only one man here. I get you second. Obey my commands at all times. Punches here are good. Remember, guys, I'm fair, but I'm firm. Touch them up. What a moment for these guys. The interesting thing about Phillips versus Uma, the champion Phillips is probably the better boxer and puncher. Yet Uma is all about nonstop pressure. And he seems to be on a mission and appears almost destined for glory. We'll see if Phillips gets in the way of Kasim Uma. Rematches generally don't live up to the original, as you know, Al. This could be an exception. You know, we want to watch early. Verna Phillips told us that in that first match, he was, and he was, almost always coming forward against Uma. He wants to box a little more, make Uma come to him. And, we'll, and early he's starting to do that, isn't he? Phillips got hit a lot in that first fight with that forward march style, but he got countered a lot. See that? There's the game, there's the blueprint right there. You make Uma come in, you, you throw a combination, and then you get out. And that's a whole different style that Uma saw, and maybe a different one that he would expect to see from Verno Phillips, and maybe a different one that he thinks a 34-year-old fighter would ever try. First fight, as you know, tremendously competitive. No let up, no title at stake. Imagine the possibilities here with one of the main title belts on the line. Phillips needs to work the body on the inside. There you see him doing it. Phillips in the blue with the black trim. Uma in the red with the blue and white trim. Two tough, durable warriors with terrific chins. Oma, a southpaw, as you can see, who looks to out-hustle and out-punch, extremely busy. Verno Phillips has already set the tone for this fight. That isn't to suggest it's not going to change oh, two or three down, times. Down, I would think there would be an ebb and a flow. But very good early signs for Verno Phillips by setting the tone of being able to box, use good hand down, speed, down, and down, he's down. created some confusion for Kasim Uma right now. He said he would take a more tactical approach to... Uh, the rematch. We saw him against Carlos Bohorquez do exactly this. This was precisely the way he fought. And of course, Bohorquez has stepped down from Uma, though a very tough guy. I remember how we left off in that last fight in Joplin, Missouri, back in, in June, saying, Boy, Verno Phillips probably wishes he had had Kasim Uma in front of him that night. He looked so good. Bring out, bring out, bring out, clean. Don't forget, orthodox versus southpaw often leads to uh, head clashes, cuts, tangled feet. None of that in the first fight. Was it a factor? The righty uh, wants to move to his left to stay away from the southpaw power. Normally, southpaws move to their right to avoid the righty's power, but Uma has been known to move to his left to confuse oh, oh. opponents. Go ahead. So he's all over the place. This is the perfect first round for Verno Phillips. If he dreamed 
a dream before this fight stop, stop, and did some visualization. This was exactly what he saw. Get him down, get him up, get him down, get Uncharacteristically slow yeah. round for Uma. Very small punch hold out hold push from him. Down, right now he's very flat. That doesn't mean that's not going to change, but right now he's flat. Oh, time! They're telling Uma to circle around Trevor Whitman in the corner of uh, Phillips out of approximately 70 fights as a trainer. Only four losses for Whitman, but two of them were to Kasim Uma. So he really wants revenge tonight. Uma known for his high punch volume. Over 1,300 punches thrown in the first fight. Kind of a lackluster first round. Phillips, though, versatile. He can fight inside or box outside, as we're seeing here. He is just doing a great job right now. And at the beginning of this round, I thought he was going to succumb to the idea of lunging in again, as he did. But now he's back to boxing. A lot of voices in the corner of uh, Kasim Uma. And that may or may not be as uh, effective as we would like, he would like, because you have Tim Witherspoon, Johnny Bumpus, and then Lou Duval all kind of chiming in there. And you saw the extensive experience factor going in the way of Phillips. And he's been in with the best of two generations of ju uh, junior middleweights. He won the first WBO title he won back in 1993. against a very good man in Lupi Aquino. That was when the division had a lot of good fighters in it. And then he won it again, of course, recently. He is hitting Kasim Uma with wide punches that I'm really surprised he's able to land, but they're getting in. He is so much sharper right now in this fight. Well, you got to remember, too, a ring rust could be a, a factor. Uma hasn't fought in some nine months. He was supposed to fight Phillips back in June, but muscle spasms pulled him out four days before that fight. So he's had to sit and wait a long time. Aside from Lupe Aquino, uh, Phillips beating Gianfranco Rossi, J.C. Vasquez, Julio Cesar, and Julian mm -hmm. Jackson. It's a good group. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> and also beat some solid guys uh, more recently. Uh, Bronco McCart, yeah. Michael Lerma, Shabata Flores. Continues to hunt for that body. He's, But Phillips is changing a little. He's coming forward more and taking a few counter punches from Uma. And some of that's due to the success he's had earlier. But he had the success because he was boxing. His punches in the first fight, a lot more effective, harder. But he sure took a lot of punches from Uma. But now, it's sort of a switch. He's been more active, more combinations from Phillips yes. than we've seen from Uma. And that's very, very surprising. Against J.C. Candela, when we last saw Uma, he was, you know, a, a punching machine. And as you pointed out, a lot more movement from uh, Phillips side to side. Trying to... Uh, Confuse Kasim Uma lands with a right hand uh, on the ear. Another one off the top of the head by Phillips. Short right that turned the head of Phillips. Get the head out. Get the head out. That's a good one for Phillips. Yes. Here is where. Vernal Phillips with that overhand right lunged in a little bit, but didn't pay the price as much as he did in the other fight. He's able to throw those punches from very wide uh, angles and yet still get them in against Kasim Uma, and that's a little surprising. That's not a corner for Kasim Uma speaking in one voice, and that can be a problem. He's got co-trainers, Tim Witherspoon, the two-time heavyweight champ, and former world champion Johnny Bumpus. And also Lou Duva now, and there's yeah. three voices coming at him, and sometimes that can be a big problem in the corner. Not that all those men don't understand boxing, they certainly do. Top, top, Phillips top. has but one uh, voice, Hold Trevor Whitman. Be, coming, be careful, coming with the head. Round three scheduled for 12 for the IBF Junior Middle League Championship. Break, break out, break out, break out. You mentioned the layoff for Uma, and you know, right now he's having a hard time to use boxing vernacular getting his punches off and he's just not as sharp as he would like to be right now nice counter right hand though now he's starting to uh, connect a little more is casino in the red all right time time get that corner time uh, a mouthpiece uh, dislodged Verno okay, phillips 
second. The rule is right, the referee uh, waits for a stop in action and then uh, they clean it off and put it back into the mouth. Phillips not using his jab enough. Trevor Whitman has urged him to use that punch. And early on in round one, he was pretty successful. But now he's just not throwing it as much. Phillips, too, keeps a, a fast pace. Very workmanlike. Tough, somewhat awkward. Stopped only once in his fifth pro fight, 1988. Oh, go hold ahead, go hold ahead, go hold ahead, Phillips. There was the jab by Phillips, and when he throws it, it's very effective, but he doesn't use it enough. All right, stop. Best way to beat Phillips is to just keep pressuring him. And we haven't seen the type of pressure by Uma that we saw in the first fight as of yet. Well, of course, Uma had the luxury of Phillips coming to him in that first fight, and that helped him land a lot of those big punches. Now oh, he's got left by uh, Uma. Uma's picking the pace up here in this round, throwing more punches in combination, and Phillips leaving himself exposed a little bit more. Hey, we Uma starting to pick it up now. Pick up with the back hand, my man. There's a hammering right to the jaw by Berno Phillips. But it doesn't seem to stop Uma. Not much does. Good body shots there by Phillips, but he's been hard pressed to land really good shots in this round. It's starting to heat up, be more competitive now as you see Uma comes on here in round three. Showing more confidence. Firing that jab, following it up with the left. Quick! Boy, he's a cocky guy at times, isn't he? Kasimo oh, raising go hold, his hold, hands. Go hold that head down. Well, he's happy with his work in this round. He just ate a left, though, did Kasimo. After a very strong round, his best of the fight. Moving in that direction like you're going around behind his back and dig to the body. And that was some of the instruction he was handing off to Kasim just now. Now, Verno Phillips changed dramatically in round three. He was There's throwing big, no wide, no looping no punches, no not, no not no throwing no. the jab, not boxing as effectively. Let's see if he can get back to what earned him those first two rounds. Oh, see, he's lunging in with those wide, looping punches against Phillips. Oma was coming on very strong in round three. Let's see if he picks up where he left get off. Him out, get him out, get him out. You can work out. Round four scheduled for 12. Uma trying to keep Phillips on the retreat. Part of Uma's tribute to Pat Tillman uh, with his number on his trunks as well. Wild swing and a miss by uh, Phillips, but no, no offering oh, by Kasim Uma. Stop, stop. Get back, get back, get back. Let's go. Phillips has to be careful. Not to let himself wide open after a miss. Phillips has thrown his rights to the body, but again, uh, as he did in the first fight, leaving himself open to the straight left hands from that. Uma backing Phillips into the ropes, and then Phillips extricates himself. Get him out, get him out, get him out. The volume of punches from Kasim Uma has gone up in rounds three and four dramatically. Yeah, this is more like the Uma from the, the first affair. Near low blow there by Phillips. Phillips could be getting frustrated now. Get him out. You can the free. Phillips really relying on that overhand right a lot. And uh, it's not getting in as much as he would like. He is doing great work to the body, though, Phillips. Now he's going upstairs. Beautiful countering left hand by Kasim Uba. Well, that got Phillips' attention, and now he's all over Phillips. Phillips turns it around. Well, now we're having a revisiting of the first fight, aren't we? Very similar qualities to the first fight here in round four. Now the combinations from Kasim Loma, and that's making a big difference. Over really applying the pressure. It doesn't seem to, to be stopping Phillips, though. But what a high punch volume since round three for Kasim Uma. These last two rounds, he's really stepped it up. 
No let up. Oh, you have to free, you have to free, get those outs out. Looks like he's really wearing Phillips out. But it's just so hard to tell with this guy. All right, time. Well, this great exchange back and forth from Vernal Phillips and Uma. Uma counterpunching very well, especially when Phillips kind of lunges in. At more combinations from Uma. And Phillips relying oh, on two out. things. The overhand right, which he threw just there, and the body punches primarily. That was a fun exchange, just like they had in their initial fight. Great work by Trevor Whitman in the corner. Good advice to Vernal Phillips. Use the jab, get back to it, and don't languish on the inside. It is round five. And the action has really heated up in the last couple of rounds because right, Casino out, has, out, has heated up. This has been almost like two fights. The first two rounds, Phillips very sharp. Uma flat. And now Uma has been by far the sharper of the two fighters in the last two rounds. No jabs from Phillips. Wow, Trevor Whitman is so right. That was the punch that helped set things up in rounds one and two, and he's just not using that punch. All of a sudden, he's just stopped. As you take a look at the press row scores, they've got Phillips ahead. Wow, I have it in an even fight right now. That's interesting. I'm not in line with the, the, the scoring today, am I? That's why this is what makes it interesting. Do, do we need new uh, ringside scores? Or, oh, oops, maybe, uh, maybe I'm the one that's supposed to go. I'm not going. <laughs> Better check this out. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to hold on. Why can't we get guys that always agree with me? Yeah, right. You know, get those arms out. In this round five, not an easy round to score. This will be one that will be tough because both men have done some pretty good work here. Now Phillips is leaning on Uma. Get him out, Phillips. You're going to work out of there. Come on, baby. Come on, Good left hand on the inside by Uma. Phillips get him out, get him out, get him out, is again out, reverting to just being kind of messy in this fight. A little careless. Get him out, get him out, and when you're careless with Uma, you pay for it because he lands those quick little short shots like that one. Keep your hands up. Uma just, uh, as they say, bippity bopping off the head of Bruno Phillips. And just continues to fire away. They may not be the hardest punch right. in the world. You're right. But the judges see that. You're right, and they're landing. They're not the no knockout punches, but they're good, solid punches that are landing, like no. Clean punching and effective punching. That's what the judges look for. <laughs> But, you know, it's not that Verno's not getting some work done to the body and to the head, but I don't know if he's getting enough done in this round. Well, those punches uh, look good, but they were blocked by Kasim Uma. And Phillips is now mostly missing. Another good one for Kasim, who wants to get the crowd going. As a child, Kasim Uma had more bullets than food, and he is firing bullets here at Verno Phillips as we enter round six. Three rounds. Kasim Oma has really turned it up. The punch volume, the work rate on, after a, a couple of lackluster rounds to start the fight. Oma, who me, hold, tried hold, to join the United on, States on the Army. Come on, guys. But was it admitted it because up. he is not yet a United States citizen, but he's working on it. And that's why he had so on, much uh, reverence for Pat Tillman, who he dedicates this fight to. Come on, get, the, get, the out. get him out. Let him out. Get 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 him very huh. much changed his strategy since those first two rounds, and this one isn't working as well. Now, there's the, uh, at least the token jab, and that's all he needs against Duma. You know, as Trevor Whitman said, just throw that jab out. It helps disrupt things and lets you land something else. 
Phillips has become reliant on that right, which he just landed. But he can't land enough of those, I don't think, to win this fight. And I'm not sure he can well, knock yeah, him out it. with it. Right now, Uma looks the hungrier of the two for this world title. Phillips 5-2 and two in world title fights. Uma enters uncharted territory here as far as championships. A six-year pro in Uma versus a 16-year pro in Phillips. Phillips landing with the right hand there, 38-9 and 120 knockouts. Uma, 19-1 and 113 KOs. You know, Uma is kind of like the Ichiro of boxing. He just keeps hitting singles all through the match until, you know what? He's won, <laughs> period. Well, it just adds up and accumulates, and it just wears you out after all that pounding. He continues to hammer away at Phillips, who just took a look back with a big sigh of relief and charged forward again. And these are good, straight, one-two combinations. I talked about that in the keys to victory. Right up the middle is where he wants to come with good, straight punches, and that's what Um has been doing for the most part in this round. In an aberration, Um has only lost his 10th fight in November 99, a first-round TKO, believe it or not, to Augustin Silva. It ended on the three knockdown. Those were the only times he was ever down in that one fight. His only loss. Phillips has been down a couple of times, but came back to, to win. He didn't against Kasim Uma. He took a body shot in the ninth round, went down, took a knee against Uma in the first fight. Lost that fight to Kasim. Round six in the books. Let's go over to Jim Gray. Jim. All right, thank you very much, Steve. I'm here with Winky Wright. Winky used to have this title, but you'll fight Sugar Shane Mosley in a rematch on the 20th of November. How's your training going? Oh, uh, the training going well, and uh, we prepared to do what we did uh, last March to Sugar Shane. Sugar Shane, great fighter, but it's my time. You know, I train hard. It's been a long time coming, and I'm, I'm coming to win the fight. Now, you were stripped because you did not want to fight either one of these two, plus you had a rematch clause. Yeah. Would you like to fight the winner of this match? No, I wasn't stripped because I didn't want to fight either one of these two. I was stripped because I gave Sugar Shane gave me the opportunity to become undisputed, and the only right thing was to do to give him a rematch, and that's what I told him, and that's what I did. So they stripped me before they gave me a chance to uh, unif to give Sugar Shane a chance. So if that's what they want to do, then that's cool. I'm looking for a big fight anyway. I'm looking. I want to fight the best. I got 50 pro fights. Would you I fight these guys if you win? Yeah, yeah, that's no problem. But I'm looking past these guys. I need Tito De La Hoya, Bernard Hopkins. That's them the fights I'm looking for. Who do you think is winning this fight right now? Uh, it's a good fight, but uh, now I think Uma is winning. You know, uh, what's name started fast, but I think Uma's coming on late. Winky, thank you for your time. Good luck in your upcoming bout. Thank you, man. All right, back to you, Steve. All right, Jim, well, there's one guy who I think agrees with you, Al. Yeah, there you go. We found Winky. somebody. How come Winky's not uh, scoring at Winky? Yeah. Well, the uh, winner tonight could be in line for a shot at Ronald Winky Wright in uh, what has become an interesting, talented 154-pound division. Round 7, scheduled for 12 for the IBF Junior Middleweight Championship. Kasim Uma has seemingly taken control after the first two rounds against the uh, champion, Verno Phillips. And what he does is he just wears you down. We saw him knock out uh, J.C. Candelo in the 10th round in his fight against uh, Phillips a couple years ago. And there you see the uh, the scoring. Uh, <laughs> so they're coming a little more in line with, the, closer. with it. I have uh, Uma ahead by two points in this fight. Uh, and then in the in the Phillips fight, uh, by the ninth round, he knocked him down with a body punch, oh, and by the tenth him round, him on, him he on, was on. really hurting him and controlling him. It's a, a combination of just a lot of punches. The hand from Uma he wears you down. I'm a little surprised by some of that scoring. I thought Uma would be ahead Break. at this break point. Break. Break up, break up. Well, I do think he's won the last four rounds. rounds. The first two rounds very clearly for Phillips. And there might have been maybe in the third or fourth there was a round that was close enough to... Um, you know, to say that we're looking at an even, uh, close to an even fight. Oh, there's a right hand out of nowhere by Verno Phillips. He snuck one in. It sent Kasim back, but now Uma rifles a few more. Huh. 
Phillips has become now a fighter throwing big, wide, looping punches, hoping to land a big shot. It's not what he was in the first two rounds. Yeah, all of a sudden, he just stopped with some very, very sound strategy. Yeah. And, and he, he stopped using the jab completely after round two. Get Trevor Whitman, God, God bless him, he keeps on. asking for it. And uh, Verno just is unwilling or ina unable to land that punch. Another thing Verno Phillips can do, and you see he was starting to want to do it, he's very good at switching to the lefty style, which can be a problem for a lefty. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. He hasn't done it yet, even though he's shown signs of wanting to do it. Meanwhile, Uma keeps pecking away. Uma's doing the, uh, the right thing. You can't let Phillips dictate or set the pace, and he's not letting Phillips do that. And that's precisely what he did in the first outing. Don't hold that head down, my man. Don't hold that head down. Let's go. Let's go. Final seconds of round seven. Uma cautioned by Joe Cortez for holding the head down. Now to see him doing a little clowning. Be nice to bring some of those back. Kasim Uma in search of glory here. His first world title has been a round eight scheduled for 12. Uma in the red trunks. Phillips the champion in the blue with the black trim. Uma continues to chase Phillips around. And you know, it's true that while we're feeling these rounds are going to Uma, it is not as if Fernando Phillips isn't getting some work done. He's landing some overhand rights. Uh, he's landed some pretty good body shots. It just doesn't feel like with the volume of punches Uma's landing, that it would be enough to get him the rounds. He's getting some shots in now, I notice, as he's going backwards, but it's hard to do that on a consistent basis. Not many could. Especially if the jab isn't part of the repertoire when you're doing that. It hasn't been for Fernando Phillips. He has a free. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Again, Phillips taking a big step back, a big deep breath, and then uh, tries to power go. forward. Get him out. Get him out. Let's go. Work out here. Clutching let's and go. holding. Work out here, guys. And when Phillips isn't working on the inside, that's a sign that he's not as effective as he'd like to be. It was a good hook by Phillips. Yes. He snuck that one in, but it was one and done. There's a good right hand by Bruno Phillips. You know, has not been as sharp in this round, though. In general, he hasn't been throwing as many jabs as straight off hands, which is what our package showed us was effective for him. Hold the hand, hold the hand, hold the hand, hold the hand. Goes with a countering right. He's scoring now with some of those Break. shots. And they are harder than Uma's by now. Uma hitting on the break. Joe Cortez not thrilled with that. Better round for Verno Phillips, though. And maybe one he's stealing right now. As we approach the final minute of the eighth. Get him out, get him out, get him out Brandon. Come on, let him out. Brandon, Uma we less got active in this round. Heavy shots by Phillips. There's a combination to the body by Verno Phillips. Digs in again. And Phillips all of a sudden opening up. Doesn't seem to phase Uma much, though. He's missing very wide with shots that are, and it takes a lot of energy out of you when you miss wildly with punches. Verno's doing that. But make no mistake, he's probably winning this eighth round. So, what a right by Verno Phillips. And once again, it's as if nothing hit Uma. Well, there's two factors. Uma has a very good chin, and Verno tends to throw that punch too wide and slap with him a little bit. So what you're saying is what looks good, not necessarily uh, a scoring punch, score. maybe yeah. not as, as dramatic as we might think. Today you're going to have it, okay? You got four more rounds. Look at me. Look at me. Discipline, baby. All right? Deep breath right now. Yeah, get that air. Come on. Keep breathing, hey. B. Hey. Get yeah. Yeah. No yeah. Cross. Yeah. Pick it up. Okay. Boxing. I get right. boxing, okay. and it's an easier fight. It's no oh, yeah. Yeah. It's an easier fight for you to box him, you see? Just put, start putting the pressure on him. Keep your hands up, okay? It's the easiest shot with the jab and the ditch of the body. Come on, out, out. I'm going to whack my... Kasim Oba, again, hearing a lot of voices there in that uh, corner. Johnny Bump City Bumpus, uh, Tim Witherspoon. 
He's got a lot of lot of experience yeah, in that but corner. I'll tell you what, they're but. literally fighting for his ear. And I'm going to tell you, I have great respect for all those guys in that corner. That is not the way you want a corner to go, fighting for the guy's attention. They need to work that out. Both of them very good defensive fighters in there today. Johnny uh, Bumpus would like to see more boxing, though. He says the uh, best defense is a good offense. And, uh, of course, it's an old uh, cliche, but uh, he thinks that's the case for Kasim Uma. He wants to see some more boxing out of Uma. Now, Trevor Whitman telling, oh, nice combos by Phillips. Telling Phillips, don't lean in with your head. That's when you get hit with the, the little uppercut. And he's asking again for the jab on the outside. Well, it's not a particularly bad fight. It's uh, that you have that same not as scintillating as the first. Yeah, no, it's not as scintillating as it, but but it is intriguing. And I, again, I wouldn't be surprised if a, a, a lot of ringside observers see this close. And as I say that, there it is. I've got it 77-75 for Uma, as one uh, judge did. So it's uh, very, as one of our ringside judges did. Mark uh, Butcher from SecondsOut.com, Doug Fisher, MaxBoxing.com, and from the Las Vegas Review Journal, uh, Kevin Ioli. Halfway through the ninth. It's been like it's coming too hard. Yeah. Yeah. He's, not he's, he's, he's right here in my town. He's my buddy. So I gotta <laughs> he's a good man. He is a good, very good boxing rider as well. He, Phillips is fighting better in these rounds. He's he's showing a little more discipline, although that didn't show it. And uh, Uma has really lowered his punch output a lot. Some wide, slow punches by... Uh, Verno Phillips and really opens himself up to countering shots by Kasim Uma. Perhaps not shots that will deck him, but shots that will score points for Kasim, as he's been doing throughout. Things have slowed down a bit now. It's really not the best performance by either of these men in their last five or six fights. They've Stop. both been Hold. just superb in their last five or six okay. fights. Just time, excellent. Right. And okay. here against each other, they've neutralized each other to some degree. Aljo Cortez is coming awfully close to taking a point away from Kasim Oma. He's already warned him twice about hitting on the break. One more, he could lose a point. These are close, close rounds. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. And now Verno Phillips being accused of the hold by Cortez. Five right, time. There you go. corner, particularly from Tim Witherspoon. Not much technical advice happening over there. Though. A lot of cheerleading. But they did want Kashim to go to the potty more. Round 10. Scheduled for 12 for the IBF Junior Middleweight Championship. Top. Verno Phelps, Top. the champion, in the blue with the black trim. The southpaw in the red, Kasim Uma, in his first world title bout. Oh. Top. 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 Top right there. Very close fight, according to the press row observers and i think it's that because in the last few rounds kasim uma has slowed uh, discernibly and phillips has done just enough to maybe win rounds or make them close and even now here's uma finally putting some punches together which he hasn't done well one thing's for sure kasim uma demonstrating what kind of condition he is in once again particularly after it looked like he might be suffering from ring rust in the early hey, going. Let him, let him up, you guys can work out of there. You have to free. There's a left-right combination by Averno Phillips upstairs. Oh, you you know, Uma's right? allowing these rounds to be close enough where he could lose them. Now there's some tape dangling from the left uh, wrist of Uma. We'll see if Joe Cortez has to step in. That gets in the way. All right, hold, time, hold. Time. Go over here. That one. Get the tape. Let's go. Get the tape. Let's put the mouthpiece back in. Get the tape. Come on. Uh, 
Johnny Bumpus there. Well, right, five months in. after winning the WBA Junior Welterweight Championship, he lost to Gene Hatcher in the 1984 Ring Magazine upset of the year. Johnny Bumpus. Yeah, that was a very, very interesting uh, uh, fight. Big upset. Come to the final minute of round 10. This could be a pivotal round in this match. Um, no, get it get it's up. a round in okay, which get, Uma has started to look like he's getting back to throwing those volumes of punches, but then he'll stop for a while, and Phillips will land one or two showy punches. So it, this, too, will be a difficult round for the judges. The guy's got a 25-second breather to fix the tape on the glove of Kasim Uma. Phillips going down to the Bring body with the combination. He hasn't been doing that as much in the last couple of rounds. Ooh, wow, those are excellent combos downstairs. Bruno Phillips oh, connecting. Side, no knockdowns, no cuts. See, that's the style he used in the first round. You land a combination, you get back, you box, and then, then you come back and do it again. That's what he's doing now in this round. He's back to what he did in the first two rounds, and it's, it's good. Unfortunately, he forgot to do it between rounds three and yeah. nine. Get him out, get him out, get him out, get him out. Get him out. Hey! Get him out. Get him out. Listen to me. Take your time, get your shoulders a little rested, and then find the shot. You gotta look for it, you gotta create an opening for it. You got it? Here we go. Deep breath. On them toes, it's time to finish hard. Let's bring out that got soul rebel, more. baby. Come on. Two more, Come on. Okay, Rock up, baby. Here we go. In fights that have gone into the championship rounds, Casimova has only one no decision. Verdo Phillips, four up, two down, with one no contest, one knockout in fights that have gone into the 11th. They call this the championship round. All right, get out. All right, break out, break out clean. And this is for the IBF junior middleweight crown. Bruno Phillips, the champion, the orthodox fighter, Kasim Uma, the southpaw, the challenger. Come on, Brandon, Brandon, get the arms out. Your hands are free, guys. Still a little too close to call from this vantage point, although I think Uma's ahead, but a lot of the guys on, in Brandon, press get the row out. Your hands are free, guys. think it's even. Okay, come on, your hands are free. I have a 96-95 for Uma. Come on, the scoring in the first oh fight, free, which guys. was a 10-rounder, was 96-93, 97-93, 95-94 for Ola. See, there's Phillips landing some punches, getting out, looking to land again. But Kasim Uma throwing some combinations. You know, we talk about conditioning. Uma hasn't been as active overall in this fight. But now he's landing good combinations. He's picking it up again. And you'll recall he scored a critical ninth round knockdown on a body shot in that first fight, which helped his cause tremendously. Now he turns, wow, wow, oh, is he hurt? Is Phillips hurt from a body shot? He heard you. He goes through the ropes. He's still up. The ropes kept him up. Joe Cortez looking on very closely. Over, all over Phillips. on cue. The moment you mentioned that body shot from the last fight, he got hurt by a left hand of the body by Uma. Oh, a wild swing and a miss, and he goes down from his own miss. Bruno Phillips. No knockdown. He almost knocked himself out. And he's trying to protect that right side where Uma hurt him to the body. Under a minute left in the 11th, Phillips was in trouble earlier, but now he fights back valiantly. If there was a seminal moment in this fight, it was then when Uma hurt him with that body shot and has been able to take control in round 11. Even though Phillips is fighting back pretty well. And Uma continues to pepper the head of Phillips right there. Pushing him back with these shots. Phillips bending all the way down. He's just tired now. Oh, he is exhausted. Can't see how he's being held up. <laughs> Tremendous guts by Phillips. Oh, come on, these are not extremely on. hard punches by Uma, but it's a barrage. He's smothering Phillips. Uma continues to have his way.
We got one round left, baby. Come on. Hey, you got to show everything. Look at me. Look at me. one round left. Well, the body shot by Kasim Uma that he had hit Verno Phillips with. There's the left hand down there to the body. That's the punch that really hurt him downstairs. We saw that a little a week or so ago. Those, those shots down there for the liver hurt. And that's where uh, Phillips literally sent himself to the canvas. You're referring to Glenn Johnson, uh, Roy uh, Jones, I think, with that body. Yeah, well, uh, Delahoy and Hopkins. Delahoy and Hopkins as well, yeah. The ringside judge, uh, ringside uh, physician, Margaret Goodman in the uh, corner. Uh, Verno Phillips checking things out there. William Berliner in the corner of uh, Kasim Oba, the uh, ringside physician checking things out there. Here we go, round 12. The swelling on the left eye of Phillips are uh, really pretty dramatic as well. So there are a lot of issues for him. And don't watch again, this carefully. Boy, Phillips looks like he's ready to go. Just bouncing off the ropes from side to side. Joe Cortez is just a, an inch away from stopping this fight. Oba just suffocating. Blanketing stop, stop. Verno Phillips. It's just about survival for Phillips yeah. right now because, you know, it's, it's, it has been a fairly stop, stop, close stop, stop, fight stop. on the cards. Probably these last two rounds would certainly tip it to Uma, but... Phillips thinks to himself, if I can hang in there, who knows what the cards will be. Now well, it's a 20-foot ring, but it doesn't seem big enough for Verno Phillips right now. Oh, big up, big up, big up, big up. like just a couple feet more. Man. He wants to turn this into the Verno Phillips Invitational Track Meet for the yes. last 1 minute and 34 oh. seconds of this fight. And then a left hook to the head by Verno Phillips with a minute, minute and a half remaining in the last round. This has not been the kind of perfect breakout performance Kasim Uma wanted in a championship fight, but it's probably enough to win him this match. And in spots, he has shown us the many virtues he has as an action fighter. Down he goes, but it's not a knockdown. It was a sheer exhaustion. He says he slipped, though. Might be a wet spot there. Under a minute to go, and Uma lands with a right to the temple. You want to give credit to Phillips, though, he stop, fights stop, back. Stop. Uma again on the prowl, stalking. And once again, Uma looks as fresh. Uh, here in the 12th round as he did at the opening bell. Well, this fight in one sense follows the script of the first fight. In the first one, the last two rounds, very dominant for Kasim Oma, and that's been the case in this fight as well. Looks like uh, Phillips' uh, left eye now is uh, damaged. Hey, up. Closing a little bit. Five seconds left in the fight. Oma raises his arms, and that will just about do it. Big finish for Kasim Oba. Yeah. And this could be some interesting scoring. Who knows? Well, okay. the last two rounds, come it would on, appear, certainly him. went to Oma. Come on, come on. Come on. Yeah, I thought Oma won enough rounds to uh, capture the title, take it away from Phillips as he gets hoisted up by uh, Johnny Bumpus and Tim Witherspoon. I don't think Lou Duva wants to get involved in this right here. Big drink. Drink it. You know, if, if as Verno, for Verno Phillips at age 34, a difficult loss, but for Kasim Uma, if in fact this ends up being what he believes it is, and that is a championship win, it will have been the culmination, and we've chronicled this throughout the show, the culmination of a very difficult road. And it would indeed be a dream for Kasim, as he has both the American and Ugandan flags. Hearing it from the crowd here at Caesars, will Kasim's dream become a reality? Will he take the IBF junior middleweight belt away from Verno Phillips? Great job. Doing it in his first title attempt and looking to beat Phillips for a second time. Of course, while they're exalted in that corner, there is still the decision to be rendered. Yeah, a little thing called a decision. Ladies and gentlemen.
gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judges at ringside, Paul Smith and Dick Houck, both score the bat 114 to 113. Judge at ringside, Dolby Shirley scores the bat 117 to 110. All three in favor of the winner. And the new IBS Junior Middleweight Champion of the World. Kasim, the dream. Oh,